And welcome back to the Apocalypse, episode 28 for our Let's Play of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. And in the last episode, we had returned to base after a successful scavenging trip up north in that little uh, hamlet, just a small crossroads with uh, half a dozen buildings that we had scoured out of all the useful uh, items. In between episodes, I did as I've started doing. I unloaded the car of all the various inventory items, got them separated into our inventory piles. Uh, the only other chores or maintenance I did in between was that I did repair most of our gear um, and upgraded a few pieces to the uh, reinforced level. Um, sunglasses I'm not too worried about. The army helmet um, I can't repair up reliably yet. So you'll notice the forked spear has the plus plus now so it actually gets a little bit of increased damage when you reinforce it. It takes the welding or makeshift welder to do that so I used the makeshift welder on the forked spear. I was going to use it on the helmet but our chances were so low we're more likely to damage it than we are to repair it. So we need a little more tailoring skill before we can do a repair on the army helmet. But otherwise I didn't change much. Um, I think I changed one thing. Oh yeah the tactical gloves. So we had found a pair of tactical gloves. I got those cleaned up with our uh, soap and washboard and we're using those instead of light gloves now so add a little bit extra protection there but otherwise things should be pretty much uh, identical to how we had it previously I got our inventory sorted out and mostly set up the way I want it um, I've got drop one thing off here I had built another level f leather funnel intending to put up another water catcher but uh, we seem to be doing okay with what we got and the other tank that we've disassembled and carried around I want to keep in the car so we can siphon fuel and have a way of carrying it between locations if necessary so what I also double checked was the jack I did find it in the inventory we had found a scissor jack previously so I threw that in the trunk of the car and the only other things that I want to mention are for the tailoring kit that we located, which I think I've still got in the cart, I believe. Yeah, so the tailoring kit, let me grab it real quick. If you hit apply and go to the tailoring kit, uh, right there, you'll notice it's got a, a bit more options. You can cauterize a wound should you need to. Um, if you get a bite or an infection and you don't have the medical supplies to take care of it. The last ditch effort you can do is try to cauterize the wound. It's an important thing to know about. I probably should have mentioned it. I honestly can't remember. I may have mentioned it in one of the earlier videos. But uh, basically if you're stuck without any kind of medical supplies and you've getting, gotten bitten or uh, infected, you can use a knife or blade with any kind of a fire source. You can then use it to cauterize the wound. It's not guaranteed to get rid of the infection or bite, but it's got a fairly high percentage chance. So as a last-ditch last thing, you can give that a try. Um, but also, you can write on items with this kit. And this first one, Modify Clothing, is what I wanted to look at. If we pick something like the trench coat, for example, you'll notice this list of things you can choose from. So right now, I don't have enough thread to modify loaded in, but there's things like I can line it with wool, which will improve its warmth factor from 15 to 33, but it'll also increase the encumbrance from 7 to 10. I could line it with fur, which gives even more warmth and more encumbrance. I could put leather or Kevlar in it, which is going to increase its defensive point values, also at the expense of encumbrance. So you can modify clothing depending on the type of clothing and what materials you have. Uh, the tailoring kit allows you to do this kind of thing. So very useful to know about. You can make your own decisions on when it's a good time or opportunity to pick between these various options. But uh, just yet another layer of things that you can add to your uh, knowledge base for the game and know that it's possible. All right, so let's drop the tailor, tailor kit back into the bar, into the uh, cart there. And I mentioned the welder to repair metal, and I want to make one other thing. It's almost time for uh, the sun to go down. I did, after I did all the inventory and I crafted those couple of things, I went and slept. So uh, our tired status is gone. We've just arisen, arisen from our sleep, so we should be good on that regard. We'll need to eat and drink something here in a second. Um, but I did want to 
go into the crafting menu and a few episodes back I was planning to make a holster but we didn't have the leather for it but now we do after taking some chairs apart so I'm gonna look up holster and we can actually do a back holster that's for the rifle or a larger gun I believe we can use our submachine gun there but we just don't have enough ammo for that to make it worth it I think so I'm just gonna go with a standard holster all right we crafted it we're gonna wear it and then we're gonna go look at our gun pile and I'm gonna take one of the Glocks uh, let's take the Glock let's see the Glock 19s base aim 131 version 480 the other Glock the Glock 22 Let's see, six nine. They're both the same price. Um, that uses a forty caliber Smith and Wesson magazine, so we're just going to go with the standard Glock. So we'll pick that up, and then we should here. We yeah, we've got two Glock magazines. We'll grab those. All right, and then let's bring up our Glock. We'll hit reload with that magazine. Oops, and bring up the Glock again and reload, this time with the jacket hollow point. All right, so now we've got the Glock 19 with 15 shots. Um, I would love to load the other magazine, but we don't have any bullets for it uh, at the moment, so we're just going to hold on to that. Hopefully we'll scrounge some up in our searches through the wasteland here. And then we're going to activate our holster and put our Glock in there. All right, so if we look at our layering over here, we can see that we've got the, where did it put it? So there's our ankle holster with our first pistol. And uh, why am I missing it? <laughs> we've got a holster somewhere. Did it not put it on? Apparently not. So we still got. Oh, that's the magazine. So what am I missing here? Yeah, there it is. Holster with the Glock. It says left, so it must be on the legs. And I just missed it completely. Yeah, left leg with the holster. Alright. So added a little bit more encumbrance to our leg, but uh, it's well worth it. So now we've got an assembly of guns that we can quickly pull at an emergency. So we've got uh, the Mossberg strapped on a shoulder strap, and we've got a pistol in an ankle holster as well as a pistol in a standard holster. So, all right, I think that's enough on that side. And... That's all the things I wanted to make, so we'll grab our cart here, and here is my thoughts on a plan. I'm going to grab the cart, put the stuff in the back of this vehicle like we've been doing, and we're going to make a quick trip over to town to check out some vehicles. What I want to do is siphon gas out of any that are easily available, and also find one that's got workable 17-inch wheels, and we're going to pop those wheels off with the jack that we're bringing with us, and then we're going to head back north to Madison to that technical vehicle and try to put some 17-inch wheels on it and see if we can get that bad boy up and running. Um, the spiked scoop on the front of it would be awesome to have, plus the M60 machine gun. I didn't check if it has bullets in it, but uh, that would also be cool to use So if we get into a nasty situation. So I think that would be a fun project. So I'd like to get that done this episode if we possibly can. So let us get started. All right. And move up this way. So our water pile's doing good. I would like to make another wood run to get some more charcoal built eventually, but we're just going to leave that for the moment, get this project done. So you can see the scissor jack already in the vehicle. We're going to switch this to our cart. Why? Oh, I've probably got it set to uh, filter. So yeah, it's filtering the jack. All right, so there's the items in the cart. So we're going to empty that out. Over here, we're going to pick the car. Yeah, right there. Go ahead and transfer everything. 
And then we're going to fold the vehicle up and drop it in there as well. Actually, no need to drop it. We'll just keep it with us for the moment. Yeah. All right, so we'll close that up. And let's close that other door while we're here. Start the car up. Great, started right up. Now it is daylight. Eh, it's almost dark, so we shouldn't have a problem. I actually didn't check to see if this thing has headlights. So, <laughs> well, let's find out. We'll just get driving here. Not sure if it's going to be light enough to attract those zombies. It might be, actually. So they might come south towards us. Don't care about the possum. That guy's 60 to the northeast, so this is going to be kind of close. I'll move off-road a bit. We'll let a little time pass. Hopefully the darkness is kicking in enough. I ran over a Detura. All right. All right. I had remembered there were a few vehicles over here, so I'm not going to go too far. We'll see what we can find here. So I'm just going to bring it to a halt right here. We'll hit shift six. We're going to leave it running. We'll hop out and check this vehicle real quick. So it's got some gas and it says it's got wheels. Let's ch check. Yep, 17 inch wheel. Good condition, good condition. That one's a little rough. The two of them in perfect condition, two of them a little rough. I think that's good enough for what we want to do right now. And we can grab the gas out of it as well. So let's go back to our vehicle. And let's get items. I want the rubber hose. And I want that metal tank. We're going to wield the metal tank so that will let us siphon. Let's get that done real quick, and then we'll get the jack, and we'll come take those wheels off. So we're going to siphon, pour into a container the metal tank, and then examine here. We're going to fill vehicle tank from the metal tank. All right, so that takes care of that. We can drop the metal tank again. And what I want now is the scissor jack. And I am actually going to turn the vehicle off now because this is going to take a couple hours. We don't want the gas to run out while this thing's... Alright, so we're going to stop driving. Turn the engine off and let go of the controls. Alright, so now we won't waste a bunch of gas while we take this thing apart. So, let's move the cursor over to one of the wheel positions. Hit O to remove. Uh, I don't have my tools with me. Grab the toolbox. All right, let's try this again. All right, got that one. Remove the wheel. Oops, move back down to this one. And then over to here. All right, now we should have four tires sitting here. One, two, three, four. And they're pretty bulky. Let's come back up here. Grab our duffel bag and wear it. Oops. And I can get two of them, so that'll work just fine. We'll drop those in the car. And come back and get the other two. All right. Alright, so we got the gas. Anything else than this we want to deal with? I'll look at headlights and other possible things we might need to replace another time. Got seats we could tear apart for the leather, but I'm not going to bother with that for this playthrough. We do have a vehicle tank here. We could get another tank. How long does it take to tear that thing out? 27 minutes. Go ahead and do it. I like to have lots of liquid storage capacity in my home base. So we're going to grab that, we'll throw it into the back of the truck as well. All right, like so. Close that up, get back in our vehicle. All right. 
Let's examine the vehicle real quick. Do we have headlights? Good headlight. Good headlight. All right, great. So we can drive it in the dark. A little dangerous, as you've seen. You always want to be really careful when you're driving around. Um, you can get into trouble pretty quickly, but uh, I think we'll be okay. So, started right up. Great. N nice to have an engine that actually is functional. And we can zoom in a pretty good way because it's dark. Once we get the headlights turned on, it'll zoom out a bit. Oh, I forgot to eat and drink before we left. Good thing we've got some food handy and some water handy. All right, took care of that. So let's go ahead and kick the speed up a bit. Start turning and head off this direction. All right, so we want to go almost due north. I'm just giving us enough distance from the uh, plant here, the power substation, that we don't attract those zombies. So we'll do that. And it's actually pretty light out still, so we can see pretty good. Let's do this, though. Let's go ahead and... Now, I'm going to wait until we're past the zombies a bit before I turn the headlights on, since we've got decent visibility. And I'm just making slight adjustments to avoid running over the larger bushes and to keep us from hitting any of the big boulders. But definitely be really careful when you're traveling into areas you haven't explored previously because you do not hello bear see the one out here killing all these coyotes hmm do we want to take on a bear I think we do let's, let's kill the bear so I'm gonna bring our speed down plus we're gonna butcher these corpses while we're here so we did that let's turn the engine off step out and I am going to wield I'm gonna, let's use the shotgun. We need to raise our skills and we've got 56 shots so I think we'll find more before we run out of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and wield the Mossberg and I think the bear took off chasing after that. Can't see him anymore so alright well we'll just butcher what's down here then. Five chunks of meat's good. Not sure it's going to last long enough. Apparently this has been here a while. Chunk of meat, some fat, some sinew and bones is good. Oops, don't want the offal. Alright. Pretty good haul all in all. Close all, oops. Close all these doors. Alright, start the car back up. Kick up the speed and get moving north again. Uh, gonna wind our way through these bushes. Flowers are no problem. All right, we got a road here. That's the side of the facility. We're just gonna go right north. We're gonna keep, uh, kick the speed down, do a hard turn, get around this boulder on this side. All right, there's that bear. Let's go ahead and take care of him now. Shift six, stop driving. Yep, I know about the bear. Thanks for warning me though. How's our car doing? 9% gas. So we've got good battery power now, but the gas is going to be an issue. So we're definitely going to need to get a gas run going on. We did find that one gas station. I might try to make our way over there. I think that would be worthwhile so you guys can see what that looks like and how it works. And we can clear some zombies out of that end of that town. But let's go shotgun hunting for Mr. Bear here. Alright, let me make sure of our statuses. Nothing bad there. Whoa! Oh crap. Almost made another big mistake. Take off duffel bag. Sure, drop it on the ground. We'll pick it up again in a second. God, that was close. Alright. Back to Mr. Bear. Hello, Mr. Bear. That's good enough. So I hit F to fire, and then I'm going to aim. We need to steady our aim with the shotgun. So I'm just pressing the 5 key a few times, and I'm watching both our steadiness as well as our hit chances. So I want to get rid of this part of the bar. These are represent grazes, so this is what I want. I want headshots if possible. So we're going to keep aiming. So now we're guaranteed 
pretty much standard hits and a pretty decent chance at a headshot. So I'm going to go ahead and take the shot. And we criticaled him for 89. How's he doing? He is nearly dead. All right, one more shot should do it. Or do I... Now nah, we're going to take the shot. So Now notice that the steadiness wasn't back to zero. So the recoil, our skills, abilities, and so on will affect how much steadiness it maintains from shot to shot. As long as I don't step away or move. If you shoot and then immediately start aiming for another shot, you get to maintain some of that steadiness. And it depends a lot on the kind of weapon you're using. But I'm hoping... Ah, see now he's getting to move. I think he's out of the range now. Dang it. All right, start running. Oh, get back here, bear. Get close enough. All right, let's see if we can get a shot off before he gets out of our range. One more there. Ah, he got another space movement, damn it. All right, we got him. Ooh. All right, I'm happy. And what do we have here? Another bruised coyote. So, well, this accomplished a few things for us, so... Oops. All right, grab those, come back down. Oops, go ahead and grab the duffel bag, wear it. And you notice it dropped a bunch of items on the ground. That's because I was overweight when I dropped the duffel bag, so random items spilled out of my inventory. So we're going to grab that stuff, come up here. Okay. Go ahead and wear the Mossberg again. We're going to butcher the corpse. And five chunks of meat, five chunks of fat, a large stomach. That one we're actually going to grab. There's a reason. Lots of sinew, which you can use in place of thread. And bones are great for a number of recipes. Not least a witch's bone broth, which is a very, very healthy food item. All right. And let's grab the rest of this. Come back to the back of the car and unload all this wonderful, wonderful stuff. A lot of really good items we got out of that. So, got several coyotes and the bear. That's given us a bunch of fat, which is we need for uh, lard, for tallow, for lots of uses that those can then be used for. 8, 11, 15, 20, 20 pieces of meat, a large stomach. All right, awesome. And let's make sure we turn our run mode off. And take off the duffel bag again. Cancel that. All right, and then we'll just shift it up. All right, great. Back in the vehicle, and let's go ahead and turn the headlights on so you can see what that looks like. All right, pretty big size cone of vision out there. Where are we at on the map? So we just need to head north a bit. Now I can see a little further ahead of us, so that will give me a little more confidence in having time to turn and get out of the way if we see a zombie up there or if I need to dodge around some terrain. So it's a pretty detailed modeling system for the vehicles and for the damage that they take. As you saw when we got our police vehicle, uh, I stupidly ran over a boomer zombie and uh, it went boom and tore out a good portion of our engine and all the important bits of the vehicle. So the lights on this are going to attract. There's some zombies over there, so we better slow down here. All right, we'll just come to a halt right here. And as soon as it stops moving, we're going to first turn off the headlights. Second, stop driving. We'll hop out of the vehicle and we'll take care of these things. All right, so not too much danger, assuming I remember to wield my weapon. So we got our forked spear again. And... Yeah, we're just going to kill these. I think we've gotten rid of most of the fairly dangerous zombies in the area already. So we'll just take a minute to quickly kill these, get them out of the area so I can do my vehicle. I'll step out of that gas cloud real fast. 
We probably got a little bit of a whiff, but not too much. Come over here to finish this guy off. Uh, seems to have slowed us down a bit. Yeah, our strength is down, our perception is down. So take a look here. So it says badly poisoned. So we did get caught on the edge of that gas cloud. I really should have thrown stuff at that guy to blow him up at range. Um, it will go away fairly quickly, but it's having major negatives to our stats and abilities. So yeah, we want to make sure we get rid of these guys pretty quickly. Alright, what's this? A nail gun. Don't need a nail gun. Alright. And what's the status of this vehicle? 11% gas. Cool. We're going to do some siphoning of this vehicle. So that's an SUV. Yeah, no working wheels. Got good headlights, good alternator, and in no, faulty engine. Alright. Got the reclining seats, so it's got some things in it we could use for some raw materials, but nothing I'm too critical about. So we'll start the car up, get the engine rolling, and head over this way. This was where the technical? Yep, there's the technical. Alright, so trying to gauge. I want to be one space difference between my position and its position. So right like that's perfect. Alright, we'll slow to zero. Turn the vehicle off, stop driving. Perfect. Alright, so we made it. So this is the vehicle I want to get running. And so what we're going to do, we'll come up here and we'll hit advanced inventory. There's our wheels. I'm just going to pull them right out of here and just drop them on the ground using this advanced inventory. So we'll tell them to drop them on the pavement. Uh, yeah, right below me. So there. So we want base two is fine and out go the wheels so they're now on the pavement right next to the vehicle I'm gonna step next to it and got lots plenty of gas and battery which I'm really happy about so I'll leave what bad gas and I have in the other vehicle alone for now let's just go get go ahead and get the wheels changed out if we can I don't remember did I check what it's gonna take to take these wheels off I'm not sure. Yeah, we're, we're good. So just the jacking of three. So when I highlight this, I'm looking over here. Need mechanics two. Cool with jacking of three, which we do have. And so we're good to go. So let's go ahead and just take these wheels off. Switch to the other position. Alright, got the wheels off. Now let's... Um, oh, okay, this show is broken, so they won't show up. So lots of scrap metal and chunks of steel for us, so that's fine. Alright, let's examine again. We're going to go to install this time. And wheels. Now, I should have made note, but I believe that here, when we do install, we want to make sure we pick wheel steerable for the front wheels. So that's what we're going to pick. Here comes the sun. Firefighter zombie spotted. So having him spotted isn't a problem. If it says approaching, then we want to stop what we're doing. So we're not going to stop. I saw a whole bunch of messages flash by over there. Oh, he's fighting an iBot. Where, where am I seeing these guys? They're down south of me. So a firefighter zombie and an iBot are going at it. And a moose is approaching. Well, that's a fun little triumvirate of fun over there. <laughs> as long as they stay down there, I'm fine with that. All right. So let's go back to the vehicle. So we got our wheel there. Let's put a steerable wheel over on this side. So install. No. Whoops. Yep. <laughs> moose is coming for us. All right, this can be a problem. Uh, I really didn't want to fight a moose right now. Uh, damn it. Why did you have to wander this way, Mr. Moose? Hmm. If I take the time to get the shotgun out... That's the only debate I'm having is do I go for the shotgun real fast? 
because he's going to get in and probably swing at me. I think I should. I really need to get rid of this thing. So we're going to wield the Mossberg, and we're just going to drop our fork on the ground because we can't afford the movement points. Ouch! Like I said, he just hit us a bunch of times. All right, now it's my turn, Mr. Moose. I'm going to have to aim a little bit. Hopefully he doesn't hit me. So we've got full normal hits plus a headshot chance. We're going to take the shot. All right, we crit him, or we hit him for 67. That's how far away he managed to run. He's severely injured. This is going to be... I don't think we're going to be able to make this. He's going to get away. Dang it. Yeah. And then it reset. He's too far away already for the shotgun to hit him. He's too fast if I try to run after him. So if I go to run mode and start running, maybe we can push him into the building now. Yeah, he's, he's taken off. Oh, maybe he's going to get trapped in the building now. Hey, Mr. Moosey, where'd you go? Ha! That was some pretty good luck on our part to have him trap himself in the building. Make sure we've got a good aim on him. There we go. Goodbye, moose. Butcher the moose. Alright, chunk of meat, chunk of fat, sinew, bone. We'll grab it all. Alright, that was worth the two bullets and a little bit of damage he did. What happened to the other guys down there? I'm gonna detach the whoops. I'm gonna Attach the cursor and run it south for a second, so... <laughs> Alright, well our little three-way ended up with the Moose Victorious, and that guy's got some stuff I'm going to go to take a look at. So, the Firefighter Zombie's carrying some stuff. He's got infrared goggles. Hot diggity. And then the iBot. So I don't know who killed who, but the Moose was the only one that survived it, and he came north to mess with us, so... Always entertaining to watch the wildlife take on the undead, take on the uh, robots. So, good times. Let's uh, take a drink of water here. And another one. And let's get something to eat real quick. One more. Alright, took care of those problems. A little bit of pain, nothing too bad. Oh, we got the common cold. Eh, wonderful. Alright. Pick up our forked spear, and we'll wear the Mossberg again. Alright, back to what we were trying to do. Did I get that second wheel on? I did not. Install steerable wheel. And we're coughing heavily. Wonderful. All that running around in the rain gave us a cold. Okay, install regular wheel, I believe. And install, oops, not that position, that position. Install Rector Wheel. All right. We've got four wheels now. Spiked Ram. Ah, that'll take care of those zombies. All right. The alternator, I'm not real happy about. Um, if I'd remembered that, I would have checked it. What's it take to remove an alternator? We can easily do it. So, how's the alternator doing in this vehicle? It's perfect. So, let's remove alternator. Gotta remember to come back and get my fork. And go up to the engine area. Remove that alternator. Install alternator. Uh, the one I'm holding, not the one nearby. That would have been the one I pulled out. So we're going to say that one. Alright, there we go. we got a green status alternator, battery, and engine. The quarter panel, not so worried about. Uh, we could use our welder to get that fixed up, and we might do that when we get back to our base, but that was the important thing. Uh, fully functioning alternator and battery are important so that your battery charges properly while you're running the engine. And then, of course, we know the engine's important, so we've got a, a 4.0 liter V6 engine. And some damage we're going to want to take care of, but otherwise the front end's looking pretty good. Spiked Ram's got some damage. Uh, we'll have to check to see what it takes to repair that. 
So if I hit R to repair it, it just takes, uh, well, we're short on mechanic skill. So we need another point of mechanic skill and our glare protection, which we can do, and our makeshift welder we could do, but it's going to burn through a lot of battery charges. So we'll have to think about that. Ideally, we'd want to get a more efficient welding tool. But otherwise, things are looking pretty good there. We've got rebar reinforcement. Like to see that. All right, I think we're looking pretty good. So this is a pretty good example of how to get a really nice vehicle going. So we've still got two trunk spaces with uh, 162 liters of space each. There is the mounted M60 and we'll have to look into using the M60 another time, testing it out. Um, it says here, oh, that's where that came from. So mounted M60 firing 308 Winchester rounds, 100 ammo. So, all right. It's been a while since I've tried to use a turret weapon like that, so I'll have to do some testing and investigating so I can explain it to you guys effectively. Uh, but we're hungry and thirsty again, and I want to get this back to our base. We're going to leave the other vehicle here, so let's cross-load some items real quick and then take this one back to our base, and we'll just remember this is up here and come get it another time if we need it. Um because we're going to try to keep this vehicle operational. This is a nice uh, running around vehicle with that RAM and the other abilities that it has. So let's take a look here. Which, uh, get items, get my duffel bag back out and wear it. And is that where Mr. Kartsy's at? Nope. Oh, I just noticed a lot of that food is already showing as chunk of meat old. Bummer. Get items. All right, are we holding Mr. Kartsy? We are. Probably not worth doing this way, time frame wise, but whatever. All right, so we'll show everything here, and on this side, we'll put Mr. Kartsy, move everything over. All right, well, I guess it, up oh, the, uh, yeah, as usual, that dropped out. So we'll go here, bring up advanced inventory again. And we're going to say this side we want the cart, this side we want the technical. Um, so the slot under my, okay. That screwdriver set is confusing me. So I think that's actually on the ground, not in the vehicle, but uh, we'll deal with it. So, all right, so that's what's in the cart. And that's fine for positioning, so move it all over. All right, and we're going to stand here, do all, and here, and move all that in there as well. All right, grab the metal tank and the metal tank. Can't grab them both. All right, so we do have some gas and a decent battery here. I'm actually going to leave it. We've got a good amount of gas in our vehicle, and uh, my plan is to very soon head over to the uh, other end of the town to where we saw that gas station, try to get that area cleared out, and we can try to gas up in there. All right, so this is just a car alternator we don't need. I think we're good. So, let's examine our cart, fold it up. All right, got it picked up. Go get our fork, almost forgot that. And we're overburdened, we're overweight, so we need to drop something here. What are we carrying that's taking up all the weight? We are carrying sinew, bone, plastic bottle, not that. Ah, the scissor jack. Let's throw all that in there. That should free up quite a bit of weight. And then wield our forked spear. All right, that looks a little more normal. Cool.
All right, and of course, we knew it was in good shape, so the technical started right up, and we have a nice vehicle now, much happier. Okay, let's get this back to home, and we'll wrap the episode up. So we are just going to get some speed up. Take a look at the map real quick. Um, let's tool down that road. Nah, eh. Yeah, it's daytime. Let's do it. Let's tool down that road a little bit. So let's get the view zoomed out. And I think I looked at that truck previously, so we're going to leave it there. Uh, stop. Shift 6. Got a whole bunch of options here. Take a look at all this stuff. So we've got uh, set turret targeting mode, set turret firing modes, aim turrets manually, aim turrets automatic turrets, aim individual turrets. I don't have any experience with this. A lot of this is new from uh, when I last saw these, so we'll have to do some experiments and see how some of that works. Uh, but I am going to let go of the controls. We'll let it run. I just wanted to double check this real quick. Hey, don't care. And just regular trunk spaces. Alright. Yeah, nothing I care about. Oops, I did forget one other thing. Ooh, lots of gas. Alright, that much gas is worth grabbing. So we're going to... Hop back here. Get items. No. Here, get items. We're going to grab our rubber hose and a metal tank. And siphon into the container, metal tank. And got the entire amount. Great. Examine here. Refill. We got two different tanks on this one, so we got two 60 liter gas tanks and they're both got partial amounts I'm just gonna keep filling up the larger one that's in better condition so we're gonna fill that one all right work our way around here drop the tank and the rubber hose all right so that got us up to 27 percent so We've got a lot more capacity in this one with the dual tanks. So we'll grab the controls again, kick the speed up, and move down this road. Everything's looking pretty clear so far. Got a coyote, raccoon, and chipmunk on the view screen. Got a vehicle in the middle of the road. And looks like some buildings coming up here pretty quick. Um, let's go this way. Go right over the raccoon if we have to. Alright, so we got a couple of new zombies. There's a smoker zombie. We haven't de dealt with one of those before. They put out this huge billowing cloud of smoke and the smoke obscures them, making them hard to hit from range. Um, plus, when the smoke gets on you, it gets hard, really hard to breathe. You start coughing and it causes stamina issues, so it can be some danger. And then a tough zombie I'm not too worried about so far. Our map is just getting a little bit more revealed. We're going to keep moving this way. I'm going to go right through this tough zombie if I can. Well, I'm sure I can. Oh, take a look at that vehicle up there. It's got two machine guns of some kind and a heavy bumper. So another good vehicle up that way. Um... I'd really like to get the smoker zombie, but eh, uh -huh. technical spiked rams, spiked ram rams into the tough zombie, stuns it, and he dies. How we look in here? So we got a grocery store, grocery store north from Maynard. So does it not have its own city name, or is it the northern suburb of Maynard? I'm not sure. And yet another veterinarian clinic. Awful lot of these things in this end of the world. Alright, I'm not going to explore much more of this town. We're going to go ahead and make our turn. And head down this way. 
Oh, now it's got a name, Linnaeus, so it is another town. Three town areas, all next to each other, with a possible fourth. I'm still not sure whether this is its own town or if it's part of Maynard. But we're going to turn, kick up the speed, and do a quick run back home. Our map position, so we're doing a pretty good direction and I think I could survive brushes with uh, bushes a bunch of coyotes we're not gonna worry about them so I'm gonna be less concerned about them I think the ram well no it says the shock absorber rams into the shrubs so I still want to avoid things it also be nice to get everything fully repaired and we doing distance wise so still a little further on the diagonal then we'll cut south And getting close. There's the road. We'll cut our speed a bit. Do a wide turn. Whoa, cut our speed a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's a little funky. Uh, be careful when you first start driving because when you start turning like that, you get these weird diagonal directions and your car can slam into things that are nearby. So give yourself plenty of room. All right, so speed zero. Shift six, stop driving, exit the vehicle, and we are home again with our new prize. I like our new vehicle. It's called a technical. It's got a couple of good uh, trunks in the back for us to store stuff in. It's got the mounted machine gun with some ammo. We've got the spiked ram out front. I'm a lot happier that we've got this thing up and running. I'd like to do a little bit of repairs to it and get it fully gassed up, but otherwise I am super happy that we got that taken care of. So we're back home. As usual, I'll do the uh, the uh, boring part, the maintenance and moving items around in between episodes, figure out what we're going to do next, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. As always, please do like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you then. Have a good day. Bye-bye.